And right now, we are tracking the tropical depression on Reed. Gerard joining us now with the very latest. Gerard. It's nice to see things winding down a little bit, but we're far from done with it. We'll take a quick look at what is happening before uh, we have something very special happening, too, as well. We have a guest that was out in the middle of it. So we'll be talking with him momentarily. Meanwhile, tropical depression now. Thankfully, again, the winds have died down, but the rain has been the major factor that we have. And uh, it is going to be the one that we'll continue to deal with until Henri is finally completely gone. Very slow crawl to the west will eventually turn into a hard hook to the right and likely seeing this system exiting back into the water here uh, of the Atlantic between Boston and Portland as we move through Tuesday morning. So we still have all the rain to deal with between then and it could amount to quite a bit here. We're still talking anywhere from another four to six inches in places like northern New Jersey and into New York. So we still uh, have that to deal with. And uh, the rest of hurricane season, don't forget, we're not completely done with it. In fact, we've only seen uh, up to Henri, as you see, and we've had two hurricanes, excuse me, three hurricanes, but we still have the rest of the season to go. We're not even quite to the halfway mark with our hurricane season activity. All right, so as we mentioned again, we are uh, joined here by a guest tonight. We have Mark Suddeth, a hurricane researcher who spent the weekend tracking Henri, something that uh, every meteorologist would practically enjoy doing just from a scientific standpoint. But thank you for joining us tonight. Good to be here. Thank you. So uh, talk to me a little bit about what your main goal is when you go out to intercept storms like Henri or any other hurricane. Well, the main goal is to provide the public and the scientific community as a whole with a different way at looking at these storms. We use remotely operated cameras the same way that biologists will use cameras to try to capture the rare snow leopard somewhere or another rare species of animal that's difficult to do, maybe even dangerous. We do that using unmanned cameras for dangerous weather and hurricanes in this case is sort of the uh, pinnacle of that, you know, being such a large event. We have developed this technology to capture hurricanes at point blank range where we can still be safe or at least safer than having to be right out there in it. So being able to place the cameras in, in strategic locations covering a wide area, that's obviously has some importance. But what else might drive you to follow these storms? Is it witnessing nature's great power in person? Yeah, that's a great question. And I still, after all these years, don't know where it comes from. Where, the, where does that bug come, uh, come from that gives us the passion to do this? And I don't know, you know, I'm just kind of born with it. But also this drive to collect data, you know, the video itself is data. We call that photogrammetry and it is technically used as data. It's interesting to see, it's helpful for the public, for the media, but it's also data. We share it with the National Hurricane Center. We use it for education, but we also have instrumentation anemometers that measure wind speed, barometric pressure sensors for the air pressure, and we place these out as well. So it's not just the visuals. We do try to capture the meteorological data as well, and there's just something about it that drives me literally to drive many, many, many hours to get all of this done, get the equipment in place, and hope that everything runs properly. So meteorological data helping advance the science. Is there anything in particular you just find most fascinating about these storms? I know myself being in several of these, just the visuals that you can see with, with the cloud structures that are just whipping so incredibly fast. Of course, winds and destruction are one thing, but just the, right. uh, the science of how they form is very impressive. Anything in particular that you just find fascinating? I think it's the entire process that we track these when they are still pieces of energy over Africa and they'll come across, we give them names, so they almost become personified. And it's everything that everybody talks about in the particular affected area for many days. People call that hype, but it is what it is. And then they make landfall and we can position equipment inside of that, knowing where it's gonna happen. It, it's, I look at it as an opportunity to learn that nature gives us this gift of and science and technology with computing power and computer models that we know, generally speaking, where these are going to end up. And I think it's just the whole ball of wax, if you will, that drives me. All right. Thank you, Mark Sudd. It's very interesting Pleasure. considering that uh, the, the time that we've had with hurricanes like this, we have not seen them across uh, parts of New England for the last 30 years, Sandy being a little bit of a different animal. But tonight we're getting a new look at that. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Thank you.